Hey mushroom heads, I am looking down at a uh, pretty significant fruiting of oyster mushrooms. Uh, the Latin name for this is Pleuratus austriatus. Uh, there are other oyster mushrooms in the Pleuratus genus, uh, but uh, Pleuratus austriatus is uh, a fairly large mushroom often, and uh, they also flourish in cooler weather. So we do have uh, a lot of mushrooms in North Carolina that only do their thing in the summertime. Um, including some of our oyster mushroom types, but Pleuratus austriatus really does like uh, cooler weather, so it's a good uh, New Year's mushroom, uh, unlike most other species. So uh, it is edible. Um, it doesn't have, in my opinion, a tremendous amount of flavor. It does have sort of a, a you know, um, a pleasant, sometimes almost seafoody flavor, but it is sort of like generic mushroom taste. Uh, there is a little bit of uh, tension within the mushroom nerd community about whether uh, Pleuratus mushrooms or Agaricus bisporus, the common white button mushroom or portobello mushroom you buy in the store, are uh, which one is uh, culinarily superior. So if you're really interested in seeing some stupid memes about that, uh, I highly recommend trolling the internet because there's some um, hotly contested uh, conversations surrounding oyster mushrooms versus our uh, white button mushrooms. Anyway, identification of uh, Pleuratus austriatus is reasonably simple. You do want to be cautious uh, because it is a gilled mushroom. It is also a whitish gilled mushroom. So we do have some very toxic species with white gills. Gilled mushrooms in general, like if you're just getting started, I highly recommend uh, sticking with you know, polypores and a couple of other more distinct uh, sort of growth patterns because gills are super common. Uh, that being said, I would put this in the like first, you know, 10 mushrooms that you're likely to learn. They're so common uh, and they also have some really distinguishing characteristics that uh, they're reasonably safe in my opinion. So first thing about uh, Pleuratus is that they are a wood decomposer. Um, from this colony, you might not be able to tell that, but I almost guarantee you that Oh yeah, I can feel it right down there. There's a stump. And so um, Pleuratus mushrooms will eat almost anything, uh, but they do in the wild uh, typically grow on wood. So that is one really good characteristic because a lot of your gilled mushrooms do not grow on wood. They are uh, mycorrhizal, meaning they have an association with trees and plants. So uh, Pleuratus austriatus does not do that. You will see it growing on wood. Uh, additionally, it is sort of a um, you know buff color. You'll often see it also in tones of gray, especially ones that fruit in cooler weather. Uh, they have a fairly you know sturdy fruiting body, so you have uh, consistent white flesh throughout. Uh, you know, it's not hollow, it's not stuffed with anything cottony. Um, additionally, and probably one of the most important features of Pleuratus uh, mushrooms is that they have uh, decurrent gills, meaning that the gills run down the stem a little bit. They are not distinct, sort of, you know, a lot of mushrooms you have gill and then a, uh, an abrupt stop and then uh, cap. And uh, so, you know, you have a separation there, but not in the case of Pleuratus austriatus. Um, these are really, really big, so I'm gonna give you a, a sense of, let's see if I can even pull them loose. Oh, looks like we have an interesting mold underneath too. Bonus content. All right, so I'm going to uh, show you this uh, remarkably large fan of oysters. This is very common as well that you will get uh, a lot of fruiting bodies sort of clustered at the base. Uh, that's not necessarily the case. It's just a matter of, um, you know, how much food there is. I don't know what kind of yellow mold this is, but it's totally awesome. It gives them a lot more color because, uh, again, you know, uh, oyster mushrooms are kind of white buff. Um, and even though they do have uh, some lovely, especially when they're very mature here, I'm going to break this dude off. Uh, what you can see, again, decurrent gills, but also uh, the gills get really deep and blade-like, so they can be quite lovely. Uh, the um, spore print of oyster mushrooms is white. Sometimes you'll get a tinge of sort of lavender, and occasionally you'll even see sort of a lavenderish color from uh, the gills as the spores mature. And in the case of uh, a lot of mushrooms, you don't even really need to uh, do a spore print. Let me see if I can find a good example here. Maybe not. Um, Oh yeah, here's a little bit. So oftentimes you'll see uh, mushrooms and you know you want to understand what color their spores are because that's important for identification. And oftentimes, and, and this is a little uh, 
unclear actually, but oftentimes you'll fee see a significant spore deposit on top of the fruiting bodies, especially mushrooms like Pleuratus ostriatus that tend to uh, cluster and form these sort of uh, elaborate uh, bouquets. Uh, final notes on this, um, this is kind of an unusual um, collection insofar as a lot of oyster mushrooms do not have a long stem like this. Uh, you know, again, this is a very adaptable species. They'll grow on almost anything and uh, they do take on sort of a variety of forms. But typically you'll see an oyster mushroom and they have a short stumpy little stem and it's oftentimes like off-center. And again, this is kind of an unusual specimen. Let me see if I can find one in here that's a little bit... Oh man, it's like rooting through dirty laundry. It's really really starting to get pungent under here and you know oyster mushrooms so frequently have this sort of um, you know it's not a strong seafood aroma but it's definitely there uh, anyway I can't find one that's terribly good with the uh, sort of off-center uh, stumpy stem but again that's because these mushrooms are incredibly uh, variable and adaptable and when I say adaptable I mean practically indestructible I'll give you a really quick example so one time a dear friend of me gave me some oyster mushroom spawn uh, it was growing on grain which is very rich and can get a lot of contamination anyway he handed me this jar of oyster mushroom spawn it didn't have a lid on it and I was like okay well that's fine and I'll, I'll definitely get to cultivating these mushrooms really promptly got home decided that I wanted to go to the river instead and so I stuck it on my porch in a Rite Aid bag and then left it there for about three weeks. In guilt and shame, I opened it up three weeks later and it was just covered in green mold, as I expected. Um, and this was the summertime in California, so it was really, really dry. Anyway, I was like, okay, well, you know, worst comes to worst, I, I'm just gonna leave this on my porch. It's obviously still alive, even if it's only green mold that's still living on it. So I covered it back up, left it for another three, four weeks, opened it back up, and I discovered that the oyster mushroom mycelium beneath the green mold had uh, not only combated it, but had actually triumphed over green mold, which is really quite remarkable. Mold is super duper, uh, you know, um, abundant. Like it, it produces about 10 times the number of spores as most mushroom mycelium. So like that competition, usually mushrooms do not win. So this jar had these uh, like really robust sort of baby oyster mushrooms growing inside. I could also see like little bits of green mold that were surrounded by this yellow metabolite, which is very common on oyster mushroom mycelium. And it's uh, basically used as a defensive mechanism oftentimes. And so it's uh, highly antimicrobial. Anyway, I saw these little, you know, yellow pools of metabolite with these teeny tiny little bits of uh, green mold surviving. And then, um, I think out of disgust with my laziness, there was also this really deformed oyster mushroom that was like crawling out of the jar, like, please free me and put me in the hands of somebody a little bit more responsible. Anyway, oyster mushrooms, super common. They do come back uh, as long as they have something to grow on. And so, you know, oftentimes they'll last a few years. So if you find a spot, you should come back. Uh, and, and again, like there are some people that really like them. I am not indifferent to them, but they aren't my favorite edible. So, uh, but nonetheless, I like finding them. I like finding big fruitings of them because they're very impressive.